Welcome back. It's me, Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today from Hasbro in their Marvel Legends line, we are featuring the retro-carded Uncanny X-Men Wolverine. Classic claws, classic costume. Okay, so uh, this is a figure that I never saw in the wild. Um, it came out a few years back. Um, I wonder if there's a date on here. I can't find the date. Oh, so this came back. Oh, <laughs> this came out, not came back. Uh, this came out uh, way back in uh, 2022. Uh, some of the retro carded figures for me were kind of hard to find in the wild. Uh, the one retro carded wave that included um, the Gambit and the Rogue, I remember seeing that in my stores. Uh, this one, I think I saw briefly at one of my targets, but I remember the Wolverine figure being hard to find. Uh, the Longshot one, and I think Avalanche were some of the more common ones. Uh, I never saw Spiral in the wild. Multiple Man, never saw him. Phoenix, I want to say I might have saw her once. But I just remember um, uh, this assortment was just kind of difficult for me to find. Um, I kind of held off on buying this, which kind of surprised me because I was a huge fan of the... Um, the X-Men in Space storyline from, you know, I think it was 275 to, I think, 277. Um, which this character depicts, um, you know, this version of Wolverine. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, I mean, didn't find us in the wild. And, uh, you know, I got the bug recently to buy X-Men Marvel Legends figures. I think it's more so because of the new Disney Plus cartoon coming out. Uh, some years ago, I kind of felt like I completed uh, my X-Men lineup. And then, you know, I never thought they'd necessarily do all the X-Men uh, in this style of costume. I mean, we did get the Forge, but it, it, it really took me back when they kind of unveiled those promotional photos a few years ago that they were doing um, all the X-Men from 275, and I was kind of stoked on that. So if you're a longtime comic book fan, um, uh, this, <laughs> this probably, like, will take you back. Uh, so back in the day, um, we're talking like early 90s, uh, X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, those were being written by uh, Chris Claremont, and uh, the artwork was being done by Jim Lee, along with uh, inker Scott Williams. And this was kind of a precursor to X-Men number one, uh, which is kind of this like, oh, man, it, it kind of opened up the floodgates for like the X-Men. You know, it brought, brought in like X-Men 92, the, uh, the original animated series that was on Fox Kids. Uh, but when Jim Lee and Chris Claremont were like uh, collaborating on X-Men, it was kind of like the perfect storm. And I think one of the heights of their storytelling antics back in the day was uh, the X-Men in Space storyline. It was great. This was kind of an anniversary issue being uh, 275, and it was a gatefold cover. So it, it's it spanned across uh, the entirety of the cover, including an extra fold-out page. And it's such a great looking image. You know, you have all the X-Men in the original um, X-Men inspired costumes. You have Gambit, you have Banshee, Forge, Psylocke. Uh, you, you didn't know it until you read the comic, but you have Professor X standing in the background. Uh, Wolverine, Jubilee, Storm. And in the background, you have um, Zatalin, Magneto, Rogue. And then um, Gladiator, uh, Lalandra, and Deathbird. So the storyline was this was coming off of the extinction agenda. Um, after years of being thought dead, the X-Men were back in the um, public light. And uh, they kind of like reunited with X-Factor and the New Mutants. And they kind of had to figure out, you know, where they were going to go after the extinction agenda. Um, and their first adventure together as this core team was into outer space. And it was really awesome. Um, it's kind of cool because, you know, over the last year, Marvel and Hasbro, they've been giving us some of the characters uh, from the Star Jammers. You know, recently we had Corsair, and then we had the, the, the Chode Build-A-Figure in the background. Uh, but this Wolverine depicts Wolverine as he appeared in this comic. Let's see if we can find that. Yeah, here he is. He's cut up, uh, snared up, I think like in vines or tentacles. And he's kind of wearing the Forge designed X-Men outfit, which is kind of essentially almost like the old school uniforms. Yeah, if you've never read any of the like old school, um, or if you've never read any of the X-Men comics, period, you know, they're worth picking up. The stories get kind of convoluted and um, kind of wacky sometimes, but the artwork, especially during the Jim Lee era, was this awesome. Uh, Jim Lee came on board, you know, after Mark Silvestri's uh, 
long run on the on the title. And he brought like a, you know, kind of like a refreshed, renewed energy uh, to the book, you know, visually. And it's just great that Hasbro, you know, gave us all the X-Men in, the, in, these, in this uniform, which is cool. One thing that's kind of throwing me off now that I haven't read this book in like ages. I forgot that Storm initially is wearing her standard uniform in here, which we see. Whereas all the other X-Men, they're wearing the new uniforms. But yeah, it's it's cool. I think during this time period too, I think Storm wasn't sure of her place on the team. And I think it was X-Men uh, 274. That was like the issue after the Extinction Agenda. They had that giant meeting in the war room, you know, with all the X-Men characters uh, at the time, like X-Factor and the New Mutants. And I think there was like kind of like a question on who was like the leader of the team. You know, Cable kind of stepped forward that he he kind of like claimed that he kind of pulled the New Mutants back together, especially since they were kind of lost without a leader. X-Factor was kind of doing their own thing. And I remember there was a scene where uh, Gambit's about to take off. You know, he kind of felt like, you know, he wasn't really necessarily an X-Men. He was kind of just brought on because he was partners with Storm. They were kind of like thieves and whatnot. And he was going to go hit the road. And he was asking Storm to, like, tag along. And she kind of felt like her place was still with the X-Men. So, you know, Gambit is kind of, like, you know, roped in on the team. All right, enough about that. <laughs> this took me on a deep rabbit hole. I'm, I don't know. I'm just very nostalgic for that time period. Uh, let's get started with Wolverine. Um, all right, so the card back is cool. It's a throwback to the old Toy Biz. Um, action figures. Of course, this is the very uh, iconic Jim Lee inspired Wolverine, you know, leaping at you pose. Um, I believe it's X Men, Uncanny X Men issue 248, Jim Lee's first Uncanny uh, issue where it opens up on the splash page and Wolverine's leaping at you. Or I take it back, this might be more so inspired by X Men 268, Matt. Uh, the issue Mad Report Nights with Cap and Black Widow. Oh, man, oh, man. Okay, so first impressions, it's a great-looking figure. Um, I love the alternate uh, portrait. It looks great. Even the, st the standard head looks awesome. Uh, if you don't have a maskless Wolverine, this figure is worth it just to get the extra head. You know, you can easily swap this onto another Wolverine figure. Because I do believe the body is the same we, that's reused all the time for Wolverine. So technically speaking, the, the peg should be compatible uh, with any of the other Wolverine figures that we've gotten in the past. I'm going to swap on the angry head. I, I think Logan always looks better when he's like close to being in feral mode if this will go on all right it's a tight fit <laughs> it doesn't want to go on um all right let's just swap this head back on the other one's kind of being stubborn there we go uh so yeah beautiful looking head sculpt the hair is nice uh nice neutral expression for logan He has the classic inspired uniform, nice color scheme. I do like that Hasbro's been a little bit better uh, with whatever they're doing with the claws. I mean, you still get them every now and then, and, it, and they're still a little bit bent, but you can easily correct that. Oh, yeah, real quick. Uh, I like the shade of blue they're using. I wonder if it's the same as the retro-inspired morph. Yeah, the blue looks like the same shade, which is nice. There's a consistency here. There's the height difference. You know, they're, they're pretty good about getting Logan's height right. Um, it's kind of varied in the comic books. I remember, I think, in oh, the Marvel character guide, I think it was maybe listed at 5'3", but then one of the trading cards might, might have had him listed at, like, 5'6". So Logan's a very short character, <clears throat> unlike the um, Hugh Jackman uh, cinema Wolverine, which is pretty tall. So if you've, hand <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, if you've handled any of the other Wolverine figures in the past, this is more of the same. Like I said, this kind of uses that same body that we've had 
you know, multiple times over. Um, he does have a butterfly joint, but it's mine's are, mine are a little tight. I didn't want to move too much. I don't want to force it. Uh, the shade of yellow is really fighting with my camera. Let's correct that. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful looking figure. Uh, the presentation is really well done, both in terms of the packaging and the figure itself. Uh, the, the color scheme is spot on. It's, you know, it's just like the comic book. All the details of the uniform are present. You know, he has the straps on the legs, straps on the boots, uh, the straps around the wrists. Yeah, the figure, it's very poseable. You know, nothing really new here. But yeah, it's great. And uh, if you're curious, yes, I do have the other figures. Uh, so uh, I'll review these in the near future. Here's the one uh, Marvel Legends 3-pack that features Gambit, uh, Banshee, and Psylocke. You know, in the similar uniform. And then there's also um, the 3-pack with Jubilee, Storm, and Forge. I'm curious about the Forge figure because we did get this Forge uh, some years ago, but it looks like this is a completely redone figure, which is nice. All right, so let's wrap this one up. Uh, once again, my name is Lou. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, and most importantly, be happy. And I'll see you at the next one. All right, later.